Coming soon to a podcast feed near you. Not since the late 1950s has horror been so scary. <coughs> Giant Monster Production presents horror comedy at its best. Each issue's packed with action. Shoot him, Pat! Shoot him! Suspense! Any hunter that figured out how to find them have all disappeared. Heroism! Oh, yes! Because the vampire is going to get me! Romance! Bruno Domenico! Wisdom! How am I gonna be able to start the fire if I wasted signaling for help? Friendship! I don't think it's that far of a drop. I think you'll be okay if he just tucks and rolls when he comes down and not lay on his feet. An axe of courage. If we're being honest here, Bruno did kill both of them. They are the last line of defense against the things that go bump in the night. We are monster hunters, are we not? Oh, the humanity. Tales of the Monster Hunters, presented in Monster Scope. New issues available bi-weekly wherever you get your podcasts. I suppose I should say something for the record. I told you! I fucking told you, Liam! There's something here! Look! Look at this! Nary the poor soul who has to listen to this. There is nothing there! God, you... you really can't stop, can you? There is no... stupid, scary monster! I don't know why I'm being punished for this case. Who are you? What the fuck did you do? I just wanted to watch and see what would happen. I don't know if I'm gonna make it to your tower. Reese, I'm scared. I, I thought we had more time. Alex? Alex, do you copy? Please, please answer. I, I can't do this by myself. I can't do any of this by myself. Well, let's begin. Do you copy? A horror podcast. Listen to season one anywhere you get your podcasts. The following podcast may contain some strong language and adult themes. Listener discretion is advised. You're listening to Strange New Worlds and Spaced Out Tales, a sci-fi audio drama anthology podcast. Episode 13, Outpost Alpha. Sir, it's done. Everything went according to plan. Very good. Any remnants? None that we have seen. Think we are ready to move on to the second stage of the operation. Perfect. Put out the word. Another successful mining operation. Despite the explosion visible in the atmosphere, Exotech insists there is no threat to civilians here on terra firma. The company continues to stay in their statement that the harvesting of resources is a benefit to all of us. In other news, the global stock market continues to- Ugh, I can't believe this, guys. Cool it. They're our new employer. I know, it doesn't mean I have to like it. Speaking of, you never did give us all the details on that. Well, what does it matter? The check cleared. Of course, that's all you're worried about. With the amount of zeros on that check, you bet your ass I wanted to make sure it cleared before we even entertain working for these bastards. See? You don't like them either. Never said I did, but liking someone doesn't pay the bills. At least can we get a new TV in here? This one is so old, I think it's still running off of steam power. We'll get one soon as a mission is finished. What is the mission anyway? You never did go into details. 
Okay, fine, but I'm only saying this once. You guys need to read reports. Delphine, are you listening back there? Sure am, Chief. Carry on. All right, just checking. I don't want to repeat of last time. You mean carry Delphine on your back because she forgot her no-grab shoes and nearly floated away? It was kind of funny watching her squirm. Enough, you guys. Stop it. I'm paying attention. Okay, guys. Reel it in. Exotech has commissioned us to inspect Outpost Alpha on the Meteor Corvus B. Be warned, this is a black site base, so the workers might be a little on edge. This will be a two-part mission. First, we are to determine if the infrastructure of the facility is sufficient to support a Titan-class mining rig. Secondly, we are to inspect the surrounding area of the base to determine if any modifications need to be made to the rig. This is a consultant role here, guys. If we nail this, we can expect more work of the same caliber to come our way. This is our make or break to the big time. Hold on. Consultant? What about our weapons? Not required. But we're going to bring some anyway, right? You bet your ass. We should probably pack lightly, though. I'm reading through the schematics here in my terminal. Close quarters only. We don't want to bring the heavy stuff and risk blowing a hole in the outpost. Hey, me and Betty never travel apart. You'll be apart when you get sucked into the vacuum of space. The way you guys are carrying on, you make it sound like we're commandeering the damn thing. It wouldn't be the first time. All right, that's it. Let's get a move on here. Start prepping. We pull out at 0800 hours. 0800? You're not in the service anymore, Captain. Keep talking like that, and you won't be breathing oxygen anymore, Kirk. All right, guys. Save that energy for the mission. Let's go. All right, team. We all have our orders. Before we start our respective inspections, we are to meet with the commander of the outpost at the shuttle bay. After that, we split up. Once we are finished, we will rendezvous at the command station so we can work on our final report. Don't forget, I need to take a ground core to see what kind of geology we're looking at. And yes, I did bring my no-grav boots this time, thanks for asking. Hey, I never doubted you. Do we all know our assignments? <sighs> For the hundredth time, yes. Hey, what the hell is that beeping? Yeah, it's really distracting. <laughs> Sorry guys, it's a hollow vid my wife got for me for my birthday. She says I don't spend enough time with my daughter, so periodically I can send her videos. I'm calibrating the coordinates so I can figure out what kind of delay we're looking at, on the account of it not being instantaneous and everything. Well, can you keep it down? We're almost there, and I'm sure the scientists haven't had any visitors in a few cycles, so let's try to keep cordial, yeah? Noted. Hello, we've been uh, expecting you. Well, I would hope so. You did hire us after all. Ah, oh, a sense of humour. I like you. And women. This is certainly a treat. We don't typically allow females here. The crew finds them... distracting. Melvin, you scoundrel. Are you scaring off our guests? Oh, it's nothing I haven't heard before, I'm afraid. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Clive. He is second in command of our little outpost here, and not part of the welcoming party. Oh, it's my pleasure. There was a little bit of a snag in the gardening pod, so my itinerary got pushed back a little. Anyway, my name is Melvin Palmer, and I am the commander of this base. I must ask that you leave your weapons here. We have very sensitive equipment, and I'd hate to see my work destroyed by a misfire. If the rifles stay, then I stay. Please, such barbaric instruments are not necessary in a scientific institute. This whole mining escapade has been a thorn in my side. Please do not add to my annoyance. I assure you they will be safe and sound until you complete whatever business you have here. James, let it go. Get this over with and we'll be homebound before you know it. Fine, but I won't like it. 
Now that we have that straightened out, would you please follow me and I'll show you to the command centre. These hallways are an interesting material. Is this new technology? Yes, it's actually... <clears throat> it's cutting-edge technology, the latest in carbon nanotubes. It allows for a full 180-degree view of the sky and surrounding land, all while protecting us from the vacuum of space. How fortunate. Hey, Delphine. The sky has kind of given me the creeps. Yeah, me too. I wouldn't want to be alone in the room with him. Clive, don't you have something to do? Yes, sir. I'll return to see to the cleansing of the gardening pod. It's an all-hands-on-deck affair. Then why aren't you there? I wanted to meet our guests. Well, you have met them now, haven't you? Now move along. Yes, sir. Right away, sir. Where was I? Yes, this is our command centre. Do try not to touch anything that isn't needed. We have many sensitive instrument panels. I've set aside the boring tool, as well as some exosuits for your soil sample. I'll lead the rest of you down to inspect the infrastructure. Any questions? What's that big screen? That is our communication screen. When we have a signal, we use that to set up a vidcoms with our home base on planet. We never have a signal. All right. We're ready for the tour. Hold your horses. Can we get suited up first? We need to make sure our comms work in the suit. Comms? Yes. You don't expect us to not be in communication with each other while we're split up, do you? I suppose not, but I assure you it's wholly unnecessary. I mean, it's probably not going to work anyway. Better to have it and not need it, right? I see your point. Alright, comms are good to go. Which way to the airlock? Take the corridor opposite of the way we came in. It will be the second door on your left, just past the entrance to the bloody gardening pod. Perfect. Naomi, you take point. I'll take the equipment. Roger that. Now, I can't help but notice there are three of you here. That seems a bit excessive for a routine inspection. I'll be staying behind. I need to start setting up our array so we can send our final reports. Oh, jeez, this reception is terrible. This might take a while. All right, gentlemen, without any further ado, let's begin our tour. As you can see, our facility mostly consists of gigasteel pods, all connected by our nanocarbon corridors. Aside from that, the only entry points are the space garage that you entered through and the airlock that your comrades exited from. How many pods are there? Currently, 15. I dare say that will have to improve if they go forward with this damned mining project. You don't want it to go through? What's that? That, that's just the sound for the airlock. Your friends must be embarking on their excursion. Delphine, what's your status? That's not going to work, I'm afraid. An unfortunate effect of the nanocarbon. It blocks most radio frequencies. He's not lying. Mine is showing dead air. Great. Let's try to get us over with then. I assure you everything is safe here. Then why don't you want the mining project to go forward? Because this outpost was originally meant to be a research station. I was a scientist for many years. I still miss the grind of waiting day after day for results. Naturally, I jumped at the opportunity to be the lead when this colony was announced. Shortly after we were set up, Exotech bought us out. That brought money into the picture and was essentially a death sentence for any actual research to be done. Now they keep adding on stupid additions and projects to the point where I don't even know anymore. So to answer your question, no, I do not want this to go forward. We had no idea. It's not exactly front page news now, is it? Now, if there's nothing else, I will leave you two to your own devices and your instruments as well. That was a joke. No, that'll be all. Thank you, Melvin. Perfect. Carry on then, gentlemen. I have business to attend to, but I should be in the command pod if you should need me. 
that guy seem a little off to you? <laughs> He's definitely got a few screws loose, but I guess you can't be all there to begin with to take a long-term assignment out here. Yeah. Call it a premonition, or whatever. But I have a bad feeling about this place. You say it all the time, man. Tell you what, let's get our work done here so we can go back and get the hell out of here. What the hell is that? I'm not sure. It's not the same as one we heard earlier. File detected. Gardening call. Initiating containment protocol. That can't be good. No, no, it can't. Let's regroup and get the hell out of here. What about all the equipment? Leave it. We'll just expense it. I've been meaning to put in a wreck to upgrade our stuff anyway. Kirk. Naomi, Delphine, if you can hear me, rendezvous at the command center immediately. Mission is a scrub. I repeat, mission is a scrub. Think they heard us? I have no idea, but I sure should hope so. I don't want to have to turn this into a rescue mission. Now let's get the fuck out of here. You don't have to tell me twice. This place is like a maze. Just, just keep moving. The command, the command center can't be, can't be too far from here. Gentlemen, there you are. I was worried about you. Yes, we were concerned that you may have wandered into the gardening pod. That would be very detrimental to our reputation. We can't have our guests fighting mortal peril. What would the council think? Quickly, let's get to the command center to assess the damage. Assess the damage? We're getting the fuck out of here. Well, no matter. You'll still have to go there to leave anyway. Come, quickly! You know, I've taken my fair share of spacewalks, but I tell ya, it never gets any less majestic. Yeah, majestic. You could call it that. You mean, you're not enjoying this? The soft grit under your feet, the little bounce with every step, the chance of just floating away into oblivion with no chance of being recovered. Please stop. I oh, know. You've never been on a walk before, have you? I have, just in a controlled environment, and not on a mission. But you said you were a miner before. I was! I did my training and then was assigned solely to work using grav boots. They never let me work outside the safety regulations. Isn't that kind of the point of them? Well, yes, but you can't follow them if you actually want to get any work done. Most of the people in the industry only use the tethers. They say the boots limit their freedom of movement. I personally never saw anything wrong with the boots, but whenever I brought it up, they just called me a fucking newbie. What are we doing out here, anyway? Collecting a soil sample. This is as good a spot as any. Why are we collecting a soil sample when they've already decided to launch an exploratory committee to see if this meteor is a viable mining location? You'd think that that would have been the first thing they did? Did you not pay attention to the briefing? We are the ones who will determine if this is a viable mining location. That's why they hired us. I guess you have a point there. Still, that's a lot of money for a maybe. Hey, let's not question a good thing. I have plans for that money. That about does it. Let's head back and see how long we have to wait for the guys to finish the one thing they had to do. <laughs> yeah, they sure like to take their sweet time. What the hell is that? Well, that looks like our ship. They better not be playing a prank. I told them never again. Again? Don't worry about it. Run. Welcome back from your excursion. Get one and get two. Please wait while the airlock.
blood pressure rises and blood pressurization complete you may re-enter the complex We don't have time for this. Leave the suit and the boots here. We'll come and get them after beating the shit out of the guys. How are we going to do that if they took the ship? We'll worry about that later. Warning. Please avoid the gardening pod. The fire there has not been contained yet. That doesn't sound good. No, it doesn't. But we have bigger problems right now. There's the pod. Can we just look? What if they're in there? Why the hell would they be in there? I don't know. I'm just cute. Oh, dear lord. What? Let me see. Naomi, I don't think any of them are breathing. Doesn't look like it. I guess that's where all the scientists were. Who do you think did this? I knew I didn't like that Melvin guy. He was a creep, that's for sure. But let's keep moving. We need to find out what's going on. Alright, the command centre shouldn't be too far now. Look on the ground, is that blood? It is. The blood leads this way. Oh. Do you hear that? It sounds like a person. Who? Who is there? Melvin, what the hell is going on? Are you shot? Uh, it, it does appear to be the case, I'm afraid. Clive, did it? I never liked the Boston anyway. He always seemed like he was up to something. We were walking back to command, and he shot us in the back. Finn and James were with me. He shot them too. No. Where are they? Are they okay? They're, they're back there. It, it didn't look good. I lost track of how many shots were fired. The only reason I'm not back there with them is that they were behind me and took the brunt of it. I've been trying to make my way to the command centre to send a distress beacon. I don't think I'm going to, to make it. Uh, won't you do that? In in my stead? I don't believe you. Delphine. This isn't happening. Delphine, pull yourself together. We have to get through this. I need you with me. Okay? Okay. Okay, Melvin. What do we need to do? Just go to the command centre. Use the console to send a distressed beacon. I've lifted the block on the comms. Everything should work better now. You're the reason the connection is awful here? I read that it increases productivity. Melvin? Melvin! He's gone. Let's keep moving. We're not too far. What now? Warning. Self-destruction sequence initiated. Please evacuate the facility in an orderly fashion. You have five minutes. For fuck's sake, we need to hurry. It's barricaded from the other side. Four minutes remaining. Not for long. Nice one. All right, I'm sending the distress signal now. Do you think they'll get here in time? I don't know, but it's worth trying. Trying to escape, are we? Three minutes remaining. Well, you don't have much time left, so I'll be brief. You bastard. Why did you do it? You think this was my doing? I'm just doing my job. Job? I thought you were a scientist. Get real, lady. I'm a liaison from Exotech. We were running a recon operation to see if the site was viable for mining. No, that's what we were hired to do. Two minutes remaining. I suggest you stop interrupting me. We hired your company to see what the makeup was. And thanks to your report that was sent a few minutes ago, it confirmed our suspicions. That core is pure gold. So, we're going with the quickest and cheapest method. We're going to blow that fucker up and pick up the pieces. The fireball will also instantly vaporize any organic matter. 
i.e. you and your two dead friends. How could anyone do such a thing? Do you have no regard for life? There were living people here, my friends! I've told you, I'm just doing my job. You think this is my first time doing this? I do this all the time. We just pay off the right people and we can blow up whatever we want. It's like clockwork at this point. One minute remaining. Well, I think that leaves you out of time. Nice ship, by the way. We usually sell them for scrap, but I think I'm going to keep it for myself. Have a nice life, for whatever bit is left. What do we do now? I don't know. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, <gasps> hey. two, one. Hey Daisy, it's Dad. Your mother wanted me to use this to communicate with you, so here I am, communicating with you. I'm on some asteroid, setting up the comms equipment. I, I guess if you're watching this, I figured it out. The crew is off doing their own thing, I'm staying behind. Once I get this all set up, I'm going to look at some schematics. There's some weird guy here named Melvin. He kind of gives me the creeps. I've been looking at the databases, and there's some weird stuff in here. A lot of it is inaccessible. Even on the schematic, it looks like there's supposed to be a room here that's just a wall. I don't understand any of this. I found the room! There's a panel that you would never notice if you didn't know it was there. It looks like some kind of panic room. There's a bench and what seem to be really old rations. The walls are a material I've never seen before. I ran the spectrometer and should be getting the results soon. I'm going to wait until the team gets back and show them what I found. I ran the spectrometer. It's a titanium alloy they used to make spaceships. But why they made a room out of this has me stumped. You're really good at figuring this stuff out, Daisy. Maybe you'll have it figured out by the time I can get this stupid comms relay set up. I don't know what's going on, but it can't be good. The team hasn't showed up yet. Neither has creepy Melvin or his over-eager assistant. I'm going to hide in the room I found until someone shows up. I'm really beginning to get concerned. I just saw Clive run through the command center. I was going to talk to him, but he had James' gun. He punched a bunch of numbers into the command module and ran off towards our ship. Warning. Send destruction sequence initiated. Please evacuate the facility in an orderly fashion. You have five minutes. This doesn't look good. I'm sorry. Delphine and Naomi came into the command center, but before I could warn them, Clive came onto the screen. I don't want him to know I'm in here, or I've been sending you these. He might go after you. I can't let that happen. They're talking right now, but we're running out of time. Here's my shot. I'm going to try to grab them. If this doesn't work, Daisy, just know that Daddy loves you very much. Daisy, we made it! For the moment, we're floating through the debris of this outpost. Hopefully, base got their distress signal, and we'll come for us soon. I'm going to end this to save oxygen. I love you, Daisy. Several technicians were lost in space on the voyage, but thanks to quick thinking by the ship's AI, they were able to safely reach their destination. 
In economic news, Exotech continues their mining operations last evening, this time with the demolition of a long-abandoned research asteroid Corvus B. Shortly after the blast, a small ship was seen retrieving something from the debris. When asked for a comment, a representative from Exotech said it was all routine procedure and they apologised for any inconvenience. Strange weather patterns have been appearing... Frank, what is the meaning of this? Seemingly, there was a hidden escape vessel built within the facility. It wasn't on our schematics, but one of the survivors managed to find it. Unacceptable! We must locate them at once! Already on it, we're in the process of tracing their rescue vessel. And Clive? Already taken care of. I must ask, sir, why go through the trouble of killing all of these people in the first place? Wouldn't it have been easier to reassign them all? Reassign them? To where? The research that that fool Melvin was working on was rendered obsolete years ago. I would have had to pay them severance, benefits, and probably unemployment too. It's far cheaper and easier to just kill them. And the recon team we hired? That was all business as well. They were too good and they charged too much. It was causing prices to rise all across the galaxy. With them out of our way, we can send in our own guys to fill the void and reap the profits. I see. Well, I will take my leave, sir. I have business to attend to. You do that. You've been listening to Strange New Worlds and Spaced Out Tales. Episode 13, Outpost Alpha, was written by Stephen Newhand and starred Antonio Ferreira as Finn, Cisco de Guzman as James, Stephen Newhand as Kirk, Kat McQueen as Naomi, Casey Cole as Delphine, John Kennard as Melvin, Paul Langley-Jones as Clive, Joe Kilcar as Johan Garlock, Jim Cogan as Sebastian Frank, Laura Deakin as the newsreader, and Voitrak Matras as the overhead announcer. Production and sound design were by Jim Cogan, opening theme music by Jim Cogan, and all incidental music and sound effects were licensed from Invato Elements. If you've enjoyed this episode, then please do subscribe, like, maybe even leave us a review wherever you get your podcasts. You can also visit our website at snwasot.com and you can follow us on that social media platform that used to be called Twitter, twitter.com slash snwasot. Or you can email us Email at snwasot.com. Until next time, thanks for listening. Episode 13, Outpost Alpha.